to share some life lessons along my journey and some of the things that I think we all can take away. And then we're going to find out how you can uncork your best vintage ever with the recipe for a delicious life. But 47% of people, they say in studies, pick wine based on the label. You love dogs, you see a cute little puppy on the label. I, I mean, it, it's just irresistible. It's hard not to do. People have expectations about what you're going to be like, right? And we have to kind of know what pe the labels are people are putting on us. But then we have to go inside and say what's true for us. Another thing that has really served me well in business that I learned early on is not to compare myself to everyone else. In fact, look for the contrast. Instead of trying to say, how do I match up to this one or, or my competitor or someone else in my space, how am I totally different from someone else in my space? Each of us, our work is to find out what our unique ability is. Because we have things that we are not so good at. We have things we can do, but we're not great at. We have things we can do, we're good at, but we don't like. And then we have our unique ability right? And our goal of life and our life's work should be to spend most of our time in what we love to do, what we would do for free. One of the things that's so great about food and wine together mm -hmm. is that if you do it right, they both tastes better. Mm. So after you taste that, have a little sip of the rosé okay. and uh, it should taste better than the first <laughs> sip. I call it a wine sandwich. The wine coach is with us, Lori Forster, and she and our food editors are back. So we got an affordable white that you think might match up pretty well for Thanksgiving as well. We do. It's called Vino Verde. It's from Portugal. It's usually only about 9% alcohol. So again, low alcohol, low calories, and most of them under $10. Under $10. I know, and some people think it means cheap and cheerful. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> All of you are probably just can't wait to get these wines in your mouth, right? Because you guys think that your mouth does all the work. If you want to become a better wine taster, you need to become a better smeller. And the way you do that is just by working out your nose. Go to the Giant, wherever you shop, smell everything in sight, okay? They cannot stop you, it's totally free. <laughs> My whole approach to wine and food is to make it fun and down to earth because I don't know if she told you this, but I grew up in New Jersey where wine came in a box and was usually pink. <laughs> your tongue, your mouth is not as intelligent as you think it is. Really all it knows is the weight and texture of the food or wine and sweet, sour, salty, bitter, or umami, which is our savory sense. things about being a wine educator in the wine business is that you have to hang out with wine geeks all the time. We call them cork dorks, you heard that before, <laughs> and they get out of hand with tasting the wine. The tasting notes like Robert Parker, Wine Critic, or the wine magazines, have you read any of these? I mean, out of hand. Let me give you an example of one I read yesterday. Firm and generous with a plush mouthful of fruit erupting on the palate. Ending with a long, hard finish. <laughs> Woo! God, I need a cigarette after something like that. Alternate between four different positions of holding the glass and that's gonna warm up our wrists, okay? This is gonna take a little, we'll illustrate, and then you guys can follow. How's that sound? All right, snobs hold it with pinkies out. Rookies hold them by the bowl, because that warms up your wine, it journeys your glass, you don't really wanna do that. Posers hold them underneath, isn't that precious? And to drink it, you gotta tip them back. I thought you needed a little demonstration there, sorry. Snob, rookie, poser, drink! Snob, rookie, poser, drink! Drink! 
I think they're a little confused about us at her Catholic school, the nuns. They're not really sure about our family. It doesn't kind of add up. And she had a project where she had to draw a picture of her parents. So she had a picture of Mike with this big knife, and then me with a huge glass of wine. So I think that, you know, they think her parents are an axe murderer and a lush. And they're definitely wrong on one of those, for sure. I won't tell you which. If you can find the fun and funny in life, that's what you're gonna remember, right?